Hey guys, good morning and welcome to another episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. You guys know the deal this morning. We're going to be riding to the motorcyclist office in Southern California on Yamaha's 2021 Tenere 700. So let's put the helmet on and go for a ride. All right, guys, here it is, Yamaha's 2021 Tenere 700. This is an all-new motorcycle from Yamaha Motor Corporation. We've seen this motorcycle before in T7 concept version, which Yamaha showed off many, many years ago at one of the international motorcycle shows. Fast forward to last year, Yamaha brought this motorcycle into Europe for European consumption. And now for the 2021 model year, we finally get it here in the United States. Look at the styling on this Tenere 700. This thing looks awesome. Quad beam, LED headlights, that rally front end, very clean appearance. I love the side fairings on the back. It looks like you can put a number on there and just race this thing right off the dealership floor. Really aesthetically pleasing motorcycle. And it's a great versatile motorcycle for someone who wants to ride on the street and ride on the dirt as we're about to find out. But enough talking about it, let's hop on this thing and see what it's like to ride. All right guys, here we go. Good old fashioned mechanical key, hallelujah. All right guys, hopping on this motorcycle right away. This is a very well designed motorcycle, ergonomically speaking. It's very comfortable. I love the upright handlebar. The handlebar has got a nice upright bend. It's decently wide. It doesn't have too much rearward sweep. There's a little bit of rearward sweep, but it's not excessive by any means. And not having a lot of rearward sweep is conducive to off-road riding. It just puts you in a better stance when you're riding in the dirt. Love how thin this motorcycle feels between my legs. That CP2 Gen 689cc parallel twin really pays dividends in terms of packaging. We've talked a lot about parallel twins and why motorcycle manufacturers are using them. And you gotta remember Yamaha was the early innovator, so to speak, in the parallel twin CP2 parallel twin department. I think they came out with this engine, I believe, in 2014, 2015, right around then. And nowadays, all the manufacturers have have mid-sized parallel twins. The cool thing about Yamaha's version is that it has that off that uneven firing order that just makes the motorcycle so playful and fun to ride. If you've ridden Yamaha's other cross-plane inline four equipped engine, you'll understand that, that uneven firing order and that power pulse feeling. And that really gives these motorcycles excellent character. So, the engine's playful, it sounds cool, it's smooth, it puts power back to the rear tire in a very linear fashion. So basically when you have that kind of smooth linear power, it's just gonna allow the, the tire to, to hook up against the asphalt that much better and just facilitates more control. We rode this motorcycle quite a bit off-road and quite a bit in the canyons during the official U.S. press introduction in San Bernardino, California last a couple months ago back in June and this motorcycle is very proficient at a lot of different things that's why I like it so much it's good at a lot of things Even in touring format like we're doing right now, I mean, this thing is really comfortable. The ergonomics are good. 
the seat has a nice dish to it so it's still skinny like a dirt bike seat but there's actual a cutout where your butt just sits in it kind of like a street bike so it's got the good compromise between dirt bike and street bike another important thing on the ergonomics front is just when you're standing on the controls of this bike it feels like you're riding a real dirt bike a lot of times with these street bikes turned dirt bikes they don't really understand the proper ergonomics package and ergonomics interface that an off-road rider needs you know off-road riders need to be able to squeeze the bike with their legs when you're going over treacherous terrain that's the only thing that will keep you from going over the handlebars is squeezing the bike with your legs kind of like riding a horse almost and the side of this motorcycle has an unintrusive interface so you can just squeeze it with your legs it's easy to do and it just provides a lot of control the foot pegs are of decent size as well and they have these nice rubber inserts that you can remove to give you more grip against the sole of your boot right now right now we have the rubber inserts installed that helps add a little bit of grip when it's wet out and reduces vibration slightly what are these guys doing this motorcycle offers a full manual riding experience there's no traction control no adjustable throttle modes there is ABS which you can turn off with this button right here on the display off-road ABS on or off it's super easy to use another cool feature about that button is if you stall the engine it doesn't reverse revert to ABS on there's another motorcycle manufacturer in the segment who doesn't have that feature and oh my god if you're riding off-road and you have to manually disable that ABS every time you stall the bike it is a pain and away we go guys clutch cable actuated clutch I like how progressive the clutch feels you can really feel the engagement point very well it's not the lightest clutch pull but it's not the heaviest either and I just like the, the properly weighted feel of it engine puts power back through a six-speed gearbox I really like the, the gear ratios on this motorcycle first gear is low enough where you can you can traverse technical rocky terrain and first gear is still low enough to, to motor up that stuff yet in top gear you know at 80 miles per hour we're not pulling excessive RPM so the gearing on this motorcycle and the transmission ratios are very well thought out work really good it's really hard to do when you think about it because six transmission speeds really aren't a lot in the grand scheme of things I know motorcycle manufacturers don't really have more than six speeds except for you know Honda's new DCT power Goldwing but a lot of motorcycle manufacturers don't quite get the transmission and gearing right but this bike has proper ratios whether you're in first gear or sixth gear I like that a lot of the credit goes to the engine the engine just makes power everywhere you can lug this thing at 3,000 rpm or you can let it wail at 10,000 rpm and the engine makes a good spread of power at all of those engine speeds so good job Yamaha talked about there's no adjustable throttle modes no D mode no traction control but to be honest I really like manual motorcycles we live in a day and age where all these bikes now have all kinds of electronic doodads and many of the manufacturers are really getting the doodads correct you know Honda with this Africa twin BMW with the S1000 XR these countermeasures are getting really good still it's nice to be able to ride a motorcycle that's just full manual 
throttle response on this bike is very accurate. It's easy to feel. Suspension. This bike, 8.3 inches of travel up front and almost eight in the rear. And this suspension, God, it just soaks up the bump so good. The ride quality of this motorcycle for commuting on the street is excellent. It is excellent. It just glides over the road so well. Off-road, the suspension works pretty darn well too. Definitely, this bike has a lot of movement in terms of pitch. If you're a more aggressive rider, this bike is gonna pitch a lot on you, whether you're on the brakes or on the gas. And even though the initial stroke is a little bit fast, has a lot of movement, once you reach a certain point in the suspension, it holds up really nice. Yamaha did a great job in the suspension department on this bike. And that, that softishness in terms of initial suspension movement, it really pays dividends off-road in the slick stuff because it allows the motorcycle to get that mechanical bite. That extra bit of weight transfer initially, all that does is it loads up the tire and allows that Pirelli Scorpion Rally STR tire to bite into the dirt and you have more grip when it does that. It also gives you more mechanical feel so you know what the motorcycle's doing. Speaking of the Pirelli Scorpion Rally STR tires, these tires kick butt. I haven't ridden a Yamaha that's come shoot with Pirellis, I don't think ever. And these Scorpion Rally STR tires are excellent. I've ridden them for many years now. They perform very well on pavement for a semi-knob tire. Very well on pavement. Off-road they do very well too. We've ridden them in the rocks, we've ridden them in hard pack, and they work excellently. These tires probably have maybe a, just a smidge more road performance than off-road performance, but honestly, because you're gonna be riding this motorcycle on the pavement so much, I would totally shoe on a set of these Rally STR tires, just because they work so good on pavement, and yet they still do well off-road. So excellent tire fitment. This thing rolls on a 21 inch front and 18 inch rear spoked wheels. So you have real, you have access to real off-road tires. You can put the gnarliest motocross tires on this motorcycle and really tear it up. The wheels come outfitted with tubes. Having tubes is always nice because if you get a flat, you just put a new tube in and you're on your way. If you're of tubeless design, you get a flat on the trail, you're gonna have problems. Especially if you damage the sidewall or something like that, then you're really gonna have problems. Love the way this thing handles. It's very nimble for a 452 pound bike. The bike with semi-knob tires should be handling around the pavement this well, but it does. Hear that engine sing. I love this thing. God, it's fun to ride. Whoa, we're getting going fast here, guys. Sorry. No cruise control, so mitigating the speed's going to be a little difficult. We'll have to do it manual style. Instrumentation on this bike. I like this rectangular shaped LCD. It's easy to read. All the information right in front of you. This fixed position windscreen does a decent job of shielding you from the elements. Yes, I wish it was a little taller, but we can survive. There's a 12 volt power point so you can charge your devices and this cool aluminum crossbar so you can mount your GPS or whatever doodads you have. This quad beam LED headlamp, we rode this motorcycle at night and this quad beam LED headlamp is awesome. It does a great job of illuminating the road. The only caveat is we talked about the suspension and how much movement it has. And there's so much pitch in the front suspension that when you're going through corners, it's hard to see. 
quartering headlight function would be a great addition for this motorcycle. However, because there's no IMU integrated into the design, we won't see cornering headlights. One little pro tip for riding this motorcycle at night is because the chassis is so susceptible to pitch, you can use the rear brake to squat the motorcycle in the corners and allow the headlight to throw a higher beam of light. That's how I rode this motorcycle at the night and that really makes a big difference in, in the swath of head beam headlight it puts out in front of you when you're railing corners. Handy headlight adjustable knob, adjustment knobs here so you can adjust the pitch as well. We're cruising at 84 miles per hour top gear and this engine delivers a good ride. A little bit of engine vibration, but not bad at all. Mirrors do a good job of showing you what's behind you. These floppy halogen turn signals are kind of lame. A set of more SPET LEDs would be better, but I'm sure we'll see that on future installments of the Tenere 700. All right, guys, we're on the boring freeway slack. We'll check in with you guys a little bit, but this motorcycle is very comfortable at this pace. I would certainly ride this thing on the freeway and go places on this bike. All right, we'll see you guys in a little bit. All right, guys, we're exiting the freeway slog. That was a decently comfortable freeway slog. Definitely, there is a little bit of engine vibration and the lack of a traditional front fairing reduces the comfort a little bit but definitely touring capable on this bike love how zippy this thing is around town 452 pounds with a 4.2 gallon tank of gas and it feels very agile and apt to play Brakes. The brakes on this motorcycle. I love the brakes on this motorcycle. I can't believe how much feel the front brake has. The some of the components isn't very special. It's older style axial mount, small Brembo labeled calipers, conventional master cylinder, but for whatever reason the brake feel is phenomenal. And it really pays dividends when you're riding off-road on hard pack. Well, oh, that wasn't so awesome. Let's try it again. That's better. Yeah, that one's better for sure. Yeah, much better. So, the front brakes have so much feel that you can really feel where the front tire is when you're riding in the slick stuff. We failed, guys. We should have turned the ABS off. Oh, well. Rear brake is nice and powerful too, but it doesn't have the feel of the front, which is strange because the front brakes are so well dialed in the feel department and then the rear brake doesn't have any feel. Very strange. But something that we still could live with. Well guys, here we are at work. That was a fun ride on the Tenere 700. Yamaha makes a good argument for this being the one bike in your garage that can do it all all right guys there it is the 2021 yamaha tenere 700 this is an awesome bike it's comfortable it looks cool it's versatile and it only costs ten thousand dollars only i mean ten thousand dollars is still a lot of money but you get a whole lot of motorcycle for your money i definitely would would want to purchase this bike if I was looking for a, a mid-size ADV. All right, guys, let's do some Q&A real quick. Would you like to race? Sure, I'd race this bike. I'd love to race this bike. Where's Busa? Busa's coming up next, guys. Hold on tight. Just curious about its street manners. Can you still rail it through the turns? How's the heat management? This is a lot of questions. Is the seat comfy for extended sitting on the road, wind buffeting? We talked about that. This thing has great street manners. Those Pirelli Scorpion Rally STR tires are excellent on pavement, but they still are a semi knob, so you cannot wail on these tires. You can ride them kind of hard, but you cannot wail. 
Uh, still for versatility on off-road, this bike is awesome. Heat management, it doesn't have any heat, it's awesome. Seat is definitely comfortable for medium duty application. If I was riding up to Sacramento, I would not want to sit on that bike for eight hours. Tank nooners, yes, this bike can do good wheelies. How does it handle at highway speeds? It handles great, tires hum just a wee bit, but very good motorcycle for a mid-size ADV bike. T700 or KTM 790 Adventure R. If you are a more novice orientated rider, then you wanna buy this bike. If you're a hardcore off-road rider that's really gonna blitz it and ride it down in Baja, Mexico and give her the beans and blitz stuff, you want the 790 Adventure R. But if you're not a blitzer, get this bike. It'll be better for you. Is this a contender for best jack of all trades bike? Yes, that's a great question. I would say yes. This is a jack of all trades bike. I would absolutely put one of these bikes in my garage, especially it only costs $10,000. So yes, I would buy it for sure. All right, guys, that's enough questions. Would I spend $10,000 on this Yamaha Teneri 700? I absolutely would. I like this bike a lot. If I was gonna ride it off-road hardcore, there's some modifications I would make to the suspension. I would try to fix the rear brake feel, get a little bit more feel out of that thing. But I like this bike a lot. If you guys want to read my article, surf on over to MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where all the written content goes for these things. Subscribe if you like this video. Give us a thumbs up, and we'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching.